uh, when it comes to cool people. Uh, we have our first speaker uh, here today. Uh, his name is Daniel Dichka. He's the creative director of Nine Rock Games. Daniel, please uh, come on stage. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, when it comes to the first lecture, this one is sort of a symbolic thing. Uh, because this is the first game of a newly founded studio called Nine Rock Games, which is actually, uh, I would say, Cauldron in disguise, which was the, which was and still sort of is the oldest uh, professional video game studio in Slovakia, and they published their first game after they were reborn into Nine Rock Games this year, uh, called Way of the Hunter, and Daniel will tell us a bit more about it. So Daniel, welcome. Uh, thank you, Marv. Hello, hello. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Daniel Dichka. I have started working on Way, on Way of the Hunter as a gameplay scripter. But soon I moved to a new position as a game designer, and I spend most of the time there as a lead game designer. As Marv said, currently I'm working on the, as a creative director. Uh, during today's presentation, I will show you what happens when you start working on a hunting game. So basically, chaos and a rabbit hole. F from my experience, this happens pretty much any time when you start working on a new project, especially a project from scratch, like when you are, for example, in a newly, newly created studio. Uh, and when you think about it, it's uh, both terrifying and uh, fascinating at the same time. Uh, there are so many options and so many variables and there is also overwhelming amount of work which needs to be done. And in Ninerox games, we are lucky uh, because we have lots of experienced uh, developers. Uh, as Maros also mentioned, most of them have been al already in Cauldron or Bohemia in Bratislava. And today I would like to show you what techniques we use to conquer the chaos and to explore the rabbit hole. Uh, I will share internal information about the development process uh, we will go basically month by month, and you can see how the project grew, uh, what milestones we delivered, and how the work shifted based on the uh, project cycle, of, based on the phase of the project cycle. Uh, firstly, firstly, let's start with a simple theory. So if you want to make a project, you had to answer a couple of easy questions. So you need to know what you are going to do. So you need to define uh, what's your What's the thing you are going to do? So for example, in our case, it was, uh, it's a 3D shooter hunting game. You hunt for animals. It's an open world game. Uh, we go on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Uh, our main game pillars are authentic hunting experience, um, pretty nature, pretty animals, all, almost simulation-like. Um, and then you need to set up your or you need to answer what's your main loop gonna be. In our case, it's uh, you you prepare for, or you select the animal you want to hunt, uh, then you prepare, you take the equipment, you go into the wilderness, you find the animal, you track it, you shoot it. Uh, once, you, once you harvest the animal, you are rewarded either by the trophy or you get money and the cycle can repeat. So then the next, uh, uh, the next question you need to an, uh, answer in order to define your game well is uh, your goals and motivation. So basically you need to know your customer, uh, you need to know your comp competitor, and you, know, you need to know yourself. Uh, once you answer these simple questions, you can define your niche, you can define what you want to do even, uh, even better into more detail. Then you need to understand who are your key people, uh, who is responsible for what, uh, and always you want to have people with integrity and accountability. If you have accountable people, it will never happen that uh, they just wait for someone else to do it. They will always try to do what needs to be done. But not everybody is like this, so you also need kind of responsibility in the team, so everybody knows what he's supposed to do. Uh, then we have development. This is pretty straightforward. You need to understand the limits and possibilities of the technology uh, and also the risks. Like for example, uh, you can start developing on a stable platform, but it's gonna be, it's gonna deteriorate uh, faster. 
And last but not least, there's a schedule because without the schedule, uh, you will probably be late even after the first week. And now we are going, the, the schedule is the most important part which I would like to talk about. The above mentioned slides, uh, they answer the questions why, who, how, and also this one answers the question when. They're important for one single reason. Now, answering those questions help you frame the chaos and give priorities to possible options. Uh, when you do this, it's easy to divide the work into smaller segments, set deadlines, and then focus on uh, what is important. And now let's take a look on the meat of the presentation, which is what we did month by month uh, from the beginning till the release. So I got the information from monthly reports. Uh, we are keeping monthly reports for all the members of the team, so everybody knows what's um, what's being uh, what's in development, who is doing what, uh, so everybody can feel uh, informed and entitled. And you need to understand that there is simply no possibility how, how I could get all the information from the monthly reports uh, into the into the slides. So I tried to cherry pick the most maybe important parts in the month and also the most like in the, the the things i found interesting so if we start with april so basically you can see uh there is usually a research design and development section so when it comes to research everybody was pretty much uh, prototyping and researching uh we need to prepare uh, by by that time we had to prepare our workflows <laughs> uh, how how all how the different the departments are going to deliver their work We've been learning Unreal Engine because it was back then it was a brand new technology. Not many people had experience with that. And we've been doing also some Jira and Confluence uh, housekeeping. And we start uh, researching player controller. And for the designs, it was mostly uh, brainstorming, initial brainstorms. Uh, I think back, back here we didn't have uh, design department uh, fully developed yet. And also, we needed to understand hunting in general, since not everybody has been working on the cauldron hunting games before. So when it comes to the development, we had a kickoff document. Uh, the kickoff document was basically uh, exact definitions of answers to the questions I mentioned before. And we started developing some basic interactions, as you can see on the slides. Um, also working on vehicle firearms. Uh, we set up version control setup. Uh, but pretty much this was mostly research and development and prototyping. Then it's May 2020. Uh, still uh, research. We are still uh, trying to figure out how to use third, uh, third party assets, mm. how our scopes and firearms are going to work, uh, how landscapes for levels could work. Uh, we tried uh, basic designs on world progression, meaning which parts of the level will be locked, which will be unlocked. And we started working on some sort of an AI overview. Um, we figured out the localization guidelines. And again, for development parts, we've been mostly prototyping, uh, like level, foliage in the level, uh, player controller, ballistics. And we also started working on our first animals, which were mule deer, pheasant, and a moose. Now we can go to June. So in June, uh, we had figured out um, for most of the part how the shape of the t uh, our two levels are going to work. Uh, the level on the left is North America uh, in the upper left. And the level on the right is uh, European level. So now we started working on density of the forests uh, and other details, then we decided that we are going for the animation-driven approach when it comes to animals, because that's one uh, of our main uh, main game pillars. Uh, animals are supposed to be pretty and believable. And we are uh, researching player skeleton and player animations. Mm -hmm. Then we also had to design a couple of things, like we need to set up uh, UX guidelines. Uh, we formalized our gameplay design process and in the design section, uh, the second bullet you can see, it's a concept demo content. So basically, after two months or three months, we have already uh, defined the, the, 
the content we need to have in our first uh, milestone, which will be coming in a couple of months. And when it comes to development, we develop metrics map, which covered uh, things like how high should uh, assets be, how slope should the terrain be, how big the animal should be, which fall we use, uh, and so on. Mm, and that's probably the most important part from June, then July. Uh, so in July, we prepared a list of gear. Uh, I think it was the list of gear which is going to be used in the next milestone. Uh, we also tinkered with automated testing. And we've been working on the fir first set of antlers for a mule deer. It's an American type of a deer uh, for reasons. For people who are not hunters, pretty much just a deer like any other. And design. Uh, we started working on the art design document. Uh, we, um, as you can see on the, on the pictures in the lower left corner, we added um, roads to the level. Uh, but in this stage, it's just a conceptual design, not developed yet. And we started working on the area in the level, which, which will be part of the, of the concept demo. And then also we uh, implemented shotgun, we added uh, sounds for a uh, rifle bolt for the other gun we had in the game. Uh, we created optic systems and so on. Uh, August 2020 was our first month. It was, I think, like a half a year into the development. Uh, we, we managed to get our first milestone and we delivered the macro design game document, uh, which was back then still a pretty over still a pretty high level overview uh, because by this time we pretty much knew what game we want to do but we just didn't figure out the details yet uh, the details are going to be figured out later on for now for uh, for this uh, part of the game we just needed to test a couple of concepts and yeah pretty much start and figure out everything uh, for the beginning and when it comes to the deliverables, we also delivered the initial development plan. So now we can take a look how the build actually looked. Inak nejde nám zvuk. No, sice pre tento trailer to nie je úplne také podstatné, ale bolo by dobré, keby pre teho ostatné ten zvuk fungoval. Sorry guys, hopefully it's gonna take a minute. But uh, for the time being, basically, what you what you saw in the in the concept demo, so we managed to put all the working pieces together, um, and it was uh, something we had to deliver to THQ because the 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 contract we had the contract we have with them. Uh, uh, we are supposed to deliver milestones, and they were pretty pleased with uh, the result, what they saw. Okay, so hopefully it will, the next trailer will have sounds. Uh, in September 2020, again, we were working on a list of potential firearms and potential hunting gear, because now we wanted to to create the entire list for production so we can start working on that. And we also started thinking about how to classify 
classify the animals in the context of the firearms we have uh, in order to give players the easy and understandable system and game language so they understand which firearm to use for which animal. Uh, we also figured out that there is not enough water in the levels, so we've been adding water to the levels. And since this is after the concept demo, and the next milestone is going to be vertical slice, which is supposed to have uh, the game design document, and the game design document is supposed to be uh, in more detail than in the previous document. So we are we by now, or now, we start working on details of game, of gameplay designs. So basically each feature which is going to be in the game uh, must have a design and we need to tell uh, THQ how, it's, how everything is gonna work. And for the development section, uh, we've been adding con uh, content, refining existing levels. Actually, mm, adding content and uh, refining existing levels happened pretty much uh, during the entire process our game uh, our level designers have been working on the maps on the levels for uh, f for a couple of years pretty much since start till the beginning uh, these tasks never never get finished to be honest um, yeah, that's probably it for this oh, sorry sorry October 2020. As you can see, we added a new animal, which is fox. Uh, there is a nice uh, design of the claim screen uh, of one of my colleagues, uh, which uh, was a great help for the future. We all also created a 3D sketch of a lodge, which you can see on the picture on the upper left. And when you take a look at the research, uh, research uh, section, well, pretty much we are busy with vertical slice. And we are busy with on implementing all the features and uh, all the content we have. So, like uh, maybe half a year, maybe eight months, however it how long it was, we pretty much stopped doing any research unless it was necessary for uh, a certain uh, feature. Because by this time we already knew lots of about hunting, uh, lots of about firearms, animals. Uh, environments and all what we needed. Uh, amongst the few designs which we started working on was, for example, damage system or objectives for vertical slice or hunting stands. Uh, just a remark, if you don't understand uh, what I mean by some things like hunting stands, it's probably because this is a jargon used in um, with people who hunt animals. Uh, so it's probably either this or it's internal, something like, for example, we call something zone editor, which I will go to, but it's uh, sometimes it's uh, hard to explain to people who do not hunt, I do not have the background, what actually things mean. So I uh, at the end you can ask if you have any questions. And we also starting, uh, for the development phase, we starting putting placeholders into levels, which will be eventually re uh, replaced by finished assets. And we started working on our own trees, like for example, Fagus Silvatica or Pizza Abies, whatever, however you, <laughs> however you pronounce it in Latin. And we created Wind Data Detector, uh, added Follow Deer, and started working or starting tank the ballistics to the damage system in November, uh, it's almost the vertical slice uh, milestone. So in November, um, uh, as, as the note says, um, at this time, like the content is, there is a lots of content which I'm not able to put into the presentation. So there's just a note that uh, from now I'll probably just go by design and development and not the content anymore, not mentioning like we are, uh, uh, all the time improving the levels, adding new trees, adding bridges, adding uh, hunting lodges and assets uh, like this. Uh, we also made uh, gameplay designs for shooting range, uh, bullet camera, level progression, economy, calling, and we've written biography for landowners. And yeah, that's pretty much it.
for this month. And finally, we got into December 2020. Uh, this was our second big milestone. Uh, so as you can see in the picture, this is one of our levels. This is Nost Nespers Valley. It's the North American level. And the highlighted area was pretty much the, the part we focused on into the, into the vertical slice build. So it's a small portion of the game in publishable quality. Uh, Nespers Valley, as uh, well as Transylvania, both levels were accessible into the uh, into the build. Uh, we had three jobs, three tasks for Nespers Valley. Jobs and tasks are pretty much uh, naming. It means uh, missions in this case. And there is a slight difference. Tasks are more like challenges, and jobs are more uh, story story heavier uh, missions. And when it comes to animals, the build contained elk, black bear, badger, white tail deer. Snowshoe hare, lesser scout, mule deer, and pheasant. Yeah, and we also had to deliver a uh, game design document, as I mentioned, and uh, a walkthrough document for the THQ. And the walkthrough document pretty much stated how you can play the build, what's the optimal optimal way how to play the build in order to see all the features. Uh, at the beginning of the 2021, in January, so we have at this time, we have like eight months to implement all necessary gameplay features uh, so we can finish the alpha stage. Because after the alpha stage, uh, the, feature freeze, the feature freeze occurs and we shouldn't be adding more features um, because if we would, then it would result to, to have a little time for other necessary things like bug fixing, for example, or balancing and polishing. Uh, but at this stage also, we had to do things like we had to redesign the entire parts of the map. Like you can see the, the flat thingy uh, in the upper upper picture. Uh, we found out that the swamp area is too small. So we even at this stage, we had to do, what I would say, drastic uh, over overhauls on certain areas of the map, but it was necessary for the gameplay. And one of the, one of the um, key our game pillars, what we defined at the beginning was that the gameplay is first. So that, that's why uh, we did it. We also added Lodge, which is like a, your big base, to the second uh, level, to Transylvania. And um, we started working on content designs. So we, when I'm talking about designs, we divide it into uh, feature designs and content designs in our company. So when you are talking about a feature design, you are pretty much talking about the systematic, about the system, like for example, firearms, that's a system, how, how they shoot and so on. But when we talk about content design, it's like what particular gun is going to be uh, in, in, the, in the game. So when it comes to content designs, we've been working on them continuously, but the feature designs uh, have been already mostly done by this time. And we've been working on the story and then, Again, adding some assets, uh, starting working on new animals like roe deer, red deer, fallow deer, and badger. Um, working further on on AI. AI is also one of the things which we developed during the entire entire development process. Uh, we added inventory to the character and controller support for PlayStation and Xbox and water detection in Amish. So we have like uh, shallow water, uh, deeper water, and deep water in the game. In February 2021, uh, design worked on comic book, uh, markers, letters, animal integrity, echo dialogues, exploration cutscenes. So as you can see, even though all the designs are supposed to be done by this time, there is always something which slips in. It's, it's never like perfect process that now that's it. Unless it's in the in the box and it's already in the shelves, uh, it's never done. And today it's actually never done because games are online and you can support it even past the stage when you sell the game. Uh, yeah, for the level improvements, it's like January turn, adding some stuff. So February was pretty boring month to be honest. Uh, but there was one important thing or two, I could say that first of all, we start working on saving progress. We have some basic autosave, which is like the uh, last bullet point in the development section. 
And also, as you can see, the well, it's not really good to see, but the levels start to look pretty at this mo at this moment. Okay, still got some time. So in March 2021, uh, we kicked off the marketing department. Um, we got a, uh, our, one of our former colleagues from Bohemia started working with us. And so there was a social media kickoff and we had this internal THQ sales and marketing presentation. And we started also discussions with potential partners for brandings like, for example, Remington Firearms or Steyr Firearms. Uh, I think we have like six um, branding. We, we have Remington, Steyr, uh, then it's Primos, Federal Ammunition, and probably a few more, which I don't remember. Uh, design was uh, uh, at, for the design section. We we found out that our design, our uh, damage system, still needs some some more, uh, some more sauce. So we added a cavity, cavitation uh, feature into the into the damage system. So now we've been designing it, and we've been creating tasks for Nespers Wally. It's like uh, content missions. And the also important thing is that we started working on enhanced on onboarding experience because uh, the THQ felt like there is uh, little onboarding in the game and the new players might not know what to do and, my, uh, and might, uh, might not get into the game fully. So this was actually a, actually a good step and a good advice from them. And again, we started working on another uh, animals, another um, stack of animals. And we also started working on, nemes on a nemesis of a game developer, which, is, which are letters. But anyway, now uh, we have a vertical slice trailer, which was uh, prepared for the marketing presentation I mentioned. So we can take a look at it. Uh, you can see the name of the game is still Elite Hunter.
Yes, yeah, so as I said, it's still Elite Hunter <laughs> at this moment. Uh, we forward to April 21. So the marketing started working on the name of the game and uh, they also started working on like uh, plans for the future when it comes to game studio, uh, announcements of the game uh, and visual identity. We also acquired two new 2D artists and also design was still working on tasks for, mm, for Nesper's Wally. Uh, we also work. Uh, we also started uh, going deeper into the red deer uh, or animal antlers trophies and scoring of the trophies. Uh, we also had to unify the game, uh, the uh, grass height in the in the levels because there was no unified language. The player wasn't sure if animals see him or not. So this is something we had to unify uh, throughout all the levels. And we've been working on things like positive behavior, uh, how animals behave after you hit them, or uh, to, to, to have the birds flocking together in a group, uh, water surface detection, so the player will not go into deep water, for example. Um, we added some sound effects to, ve to vehicles. Uh, we added uh, animal science procedural generations, which is some sort of a mumbo jumbo, pretty much. But you just said that we've been working on animal science, a lot system implemented into animals, and hunting pressure edit. So, for example, the hunting pressure, uh, it's a feature uh, which which uh, helps. It, it works also. It's also based on reality because in reality, when you go hunting somewhere, like for a long time, the animals will learn and they will not go there. Um, but it also helps helps the game so the players do not milk all the animals all the time the same ones, but it forces them to explore the level. In May 2021, we finally uh, figured out the name of the, of the game and its way of the hunter. As you might have seen, it was Elite Hunter before, but when we, uh, when we did a check with the native speakers, some suggested that it might sound like we are hunting for the elites and not like we are the Elite Hunter. So this was changed. And also, as you can see, we finally got our uh, character model. In the trailer before, there was a still this unreal white figure into the car. Mm, and then we added a couple of, well, ton of new jobs uh, to both Transylvania and Nesper's Wally. So we are still adding lots of content, uh, adding and also designing lots of content. And we also had to develop a tool which converts uh, units, like when America they use yards, in Europe we use meters, uh, so they can switch it, and it's for the localization purposes. Uh, June 2021, so now we started to uh, searching for a way of the Hunter logo, and also we, have a we had a cool workshop in Česká zbrojovka, Uherský Brod, which you can see in the upper left corner, they have a, a nice museum uh, in, in the in the in Česká zbrojovka, and I was able to uh, get hold of that nice pistol. Yeah, and also we had to. Uh, this is a holiday heavy month. June and July are usually holiday heavy months. Everybody's uh, out there going for holiday or thinking about the holidays. Uh, but still, those people which were in in the in the office had to do work and if for example we we have written tons of tutorials uh, at this time and we also uh, added tutorial system into the game also hood notification system compass and marker system okay let's go to the july which is second uh, holiday heavy month uh, marketing is now searching for uh, key art and they already have some sort of overview how the video trailers are supposed to be done. We've been playing trailers for uh, like, I think it was a, teas a release teaser and release trailer. We had an announcement trailer and a couple of more. And marketing is also starting working on a community uh, development. So we have taxidermies, uh, sounds for various animals, 
uh, voice uh, animal distribution. So I think it was the month before we distributed animals into one, one level and this month we distributed animals into the second level. Uh, we implemented photo mode, photo mode because this was something we had, we, we gave high priority to, we wanted to get it there at all cost. So even though it, oh, well, well, still technically we still uh, finished it because alpha milestone is next month, so that's okay. Uh, we also managed to get collectible system there. And we have an alpha milestone. So in, mal in alpha milestone, uh, there is a feature freeze and it means that all the features must be implemented. Mm, if you don't do this, then you will have troubles later on because you will not have enough time to do all the necessary fixes and balances. And unfortunately, there is no trailer after Alpha Milestone. Uh, September. Uh, okay, so now it's the time for a shameless sell-off. So we have a Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So give us a like and a follow. Uh, you can either look for Way of the Hunter or you can uh, look for Nine Rocks Games. Uh, we'll be glad for every, uh, every like or follow. And as in every September in our company, uh, we have a team building event, which you can see. We had a nice goulash in Železna Studnička in Bratislava. And the design was uh, working on overseeing mission implementation, implement, uh, overseeing comic book production, because uh, there is a comic book which is a part of the story. And we've been already starting working on some ba balancing. And development is focused mainly on implemented content for the beta milestone. So now pretty much it's only fixing, optimizing and refactoring and getting the features which are necessary for, for example, because they are like super high priority. Uh, October, uh, marketing was focused on company website. Uh, again, overseeing mission implementation, overseeing comic book production. Yeah, that's a pretty boring month. And November 2021, that's a beta milestone. So uh, in beta milestone, all features and content should be finished and everything should be polished. So the project moves into the bug fixing only phase. Uh, we kind of fulfilled the milestone, not like 100%, but like good enough, I would say. Uh, and the build contained uh, two playable territories, North Play, um, uh, Nespers Valley and Transylvania. We had Nespers Valley had 10 onboarding missions, make it in total 30 missions, 30 story missions, 12 tasks and 12 jobs. And Transylvania had 11 tasks and 11 jobs and all of them were playable at this stage. Uh, we had six licensed fire armed, uh, firearms, three non-licensed ones. We had uh, five licensed optics, two non-licensed and nine colors, non-licensed back then, but are licensed right now. And we had around 23 animals into the, in, in the game. And also, sorry, no trailer. Uh, now we fast forward. Uh, we talk about December and March. At this stage, we pretty much started moving some capacities into uh, the two new DLCs, which we are working on right now, because most of the designs were done, uh, most of the research were done. But the thing is that uh, some developers are still needed to fix the game to finish all the tasks, to bug fix, and to uh, work on the release candidate. But the people who could be, uh, could be, could uh, start working on uh, DLCs were now shifting there. So here you can see the shift in the project dynamics. Uh, after the, I'm sorry, was it, was it? After the beta, after the beta milestone, basically uh, part of the people start doing the cycle again. And April 2020, we have a gold master candidate. So that's uh, that's like um, that's a, a build which is suitable for submissions. Since we are also going to consoles, uh, we, we need to uh, pass the submissions for Sony and Microsoft in order to uh, sell the sell the games on their platforms. So we had a backup uh, which passed submissions relatively early but we wanted to um, deliver a better product. So we agreed with THQ that we will still push a couple of more fixes into the game, 
even though we, even though the release will be moved like I think four months. But so we had like two more months for. Uh, so we had like uh, two more months for development, bug, fi uh, bug fixing, and adding uh, additional content, uh, passing the submissions, and then another another two months, uh, which took us to distribute the production. Uh, which took us to distribute and produce the physical copies. Mm -hmm. And the release date was then September So, uh, to summarize, basically, if something is overwhelming, uh, divide it into smaller pieces and manage the small pieces. Uh, set priorities and set deadlines and cut anything that's not a priority in order to achieve the deadlines. And when you are searching for, or when you are exploring new subject, uh, end of a rabbit hole offers a honeypot full of new knowledge. Keep learning. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, you may now go. <laughs> also, last thing I wanted to say, which I forgot, that uh, the game is uh, fully localized in Slovak and Czech language, and I think another 12 or 11 languages, even Arabic. Great, uh, thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please open slido.com on your phones. Uh, enter the code and you can post them over here. We will be checking the Slido out uh, for them and I will read them out over here at the stage. And meanwhile, uh, before the questions start coming in, uh, I would maybe like to ask uh, when it comes to development, if it's not a secret obviously, uh, uh, what were like the most problematic features that didn't make it into the game and what were maybe the reasons for some of them uh, why they were ex excluded, if there was anything specific? Well, basically, we uh, we managed to get anything into the game, which we set like a high priority for, and we cut cut the noise before, so we didn't really encounter this, fortunately. And what were the features that uh, you decided to ex exclude, like in advance, but you would really love to have them in your game? Uh, like I can't tell you because uh, those maybe they will make it those, into the DLC. Yeah, they are making it into the DLCs. But pretty much, uh, just to summarize, if you manage your game properly, you set the correct priorities, you get all done. But we did some mistakes. For example, the FOV slider was a huge setback. Like we get uh, uh, review bombed for that, and there was a key binding. So key bindings and FOV slider pretty much were like two problematic things. But not because we didn't get them there, or we knew it was important, they were just more important things in our opinion back then. But they made it into the game in the first yeah, patch, in right? Yeah, day one patch. Okay, um, well, Thank you. design wise, uh, there is a, like a question that I always wanted to ask, um, that sort of a touchy subject, at least uh, from my point of view, is like the morality of hunting. I would say that the modern sensibilities have changed a little bit. Uh, since uh, Caldron or Niner Games developed uh, the hunting games several years ago. Uh, uh, I didn't play the game yet, I'm planning to, but from what I know, there is this sort of a, I don't know, mechanic or some sort of a push uh, to hunt in a more moral way in the game, right? Maybe you can talk about a bit about that. Like not really going shooting everything I see and stuff like that. 
Well, well the game is structured uh, that it gives you, it, it drives you uh, to play ethically. Basically, uh, the story and the game uh, not forces, but encourage you to do things like they are supposed to be done based on all the hunting traditions to, uh, when it comes to the local areas like Europe or North America, and it's also uh, we for not force but support legal way of hunting. So if you do it well, you do, you do it the right way, the correct way, you get more points. Just very easy to say or uh, simple said. Uh, but how, however, still it's an open world game, so you can take a, you can take a firearm and shoot anything you want. Of course, but I mean this is really cool because it actually supports the like the realistic approach of the game, right? That's how you actually yeah. hunt it. Uh, the there is like one thing we strictly forbade, uh, which was uh, aiming and shooting on another players in multiplayer. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have one question uh, from Slido. Uh, the hair looks uh, the hair looks really nice on the animals. Was there uh, any specific shader tech that was made for the hair, and uh, how hard uh, was it to get it look that nice? Sorry, could you show me what was the shader thingy? Uh, so is there a shader oh, for the oh, hair, hair or hair some specific animals. technology that you uh, used? We used a GFER plugin. Uh, it's a third party plugin. It's from Slok, yeah, right? Uh, I think it's, uh, my colleagues would know better, but I think it's like for former Cauldron guys. So we used this. Uh, and yeah, although we had to do some uh, adjustments, uh, there are a few issues with it, like usually there is with software. But yes, that's also a local thingy. So when this is a plugin for Unreal, so if you're planning to include animals in your game, maybe look into it. Uh, it's also made by a Slovak company. It's called G4, like fur, fur like... Uh, Gesserst. Gesserst. <laughs> Gesserst. Uh, yeah. Uh, another question from Slido. Why did you decide to create a hunting game, game and how did you persuade THQ to find it? What was the step zero, like the first step? Uh, I would say that uh, I'm not sure how it began, who was the initiator, whether it was our CEO, David Durchak, or it was the THQ. But uh, I, I remember David got fired from Bohemia, so he was free. And he had a ton of experience, maybe five to ten years, uh, with his team working on similar games, because uh, back then Calderon was uh, making Cabela games um, for North America. So I think it was a very easy choice. Uh, okay, so these are the two questions from Slido right now. If you have any more questions, please don't forget to post them or maybe just raise your hand. Uh, if we'll see you, then you can ask also directly. Uh, do you take feature requests? Yeah, you can try. <laughs> I would love a photo mode. Like a photo mode when I would, where I would uh, shoot animals uh, with a camera instead of a gun. Oh, uh, you mean this kind? Well, yeah, that this is something also we thought about. Uh, we, we call it a pacifist mode, or like, uh, yeah, shoot with camera, not with firearms, something like that. But it just, uh, it has slightly lower priority because uh, most of what we are, we are a hunting game. And like 90, I would say 95, 99% of uh, our players like firearms, like shooting, like ballistics, and these kind of things. Uh, and you can, you have, we already have a photo mode in the game, you can just shoot uh, animals with it, you can film missions with it, but uh, for, for people like these who do not like shooting that much, we have uh, mm, all the entire story, uh, which, which is kind of, I think, interesting. For a hunting game, it's more than your usual go there and kill that. Uh, when it comes to multiplayer, is there anything unexpected maybe the, the players have been doing that you didn't account for when you were developing the multiplayer functions in the game? Well, the, the biggest hinder what we encountered with multiplayer was uh, that we didn't manage to get it right on the first shot. So we are still working on that. It's much better right now. But also since we had to go on like the, the new generation Xbox, which is the XS, I think, the one, the one with, with the lower specs, uh, we had to s slightly lower the number of players in the game. But now when I go to your questions, uh, I pretty much don't think players are doing something we didn't want them to do. Uh, but we now know much better, and we have all the data for future, uh, what, how, how to improve the multi, multi, multiplayer. So can you maybe tell us something, anything about the DLCs? Yeah, you can already buy them. <laughs> 
No, actually, not not really. I can't. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So we'll have to wait. Um, uh, what was the feedback from like the most hardcore uh, hunting community, like people who actually really hunt and also play your game? Did you get any interesting insights from them after the launch, or maybe even before when you were testing the game? Uh, yes, we also did a couple of testings, couple of rounds of testing before. Uh, we have like most of the things we have. Uh, but really like we know this is bad or we know why did, did this decision we know why it is like this and can't really explain everything but to be honest uh, the community the community gave us like so many ideas for the next at least three games too many ideas for one uh, game right? but actually none of them are really bad some people have really good insight into the hunting uh, and give us like a proper uh, con uh, proper uh, feedback which can be used. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe one last question. Uh, you mentioned that you had this uh, team building event uh, in a shooting range, uh, which uh, by itself is a very interesting experience. Uh, how, did, how did it maybe change your perception of, I don't know, using firearms or hunting or anything connected to the game? Is there anything like that you decided to radically change after this kind of experience? Uh, well, I think that uh, the, the key members had already um, experience from before because we were on the shooting range before. And this team building was mostly for people who have never held gun in their life. And uh, f for them, I think they now understand much better how it is to actually shoot a gun because it's w way different mm -hmm. in real life than in movies. Oh, yeah. And uh, one more question. Uh, it's actually very interesting that you have these licensed, uh, like real guns in the game, which is not really that common in games nowadays. Uh, maybe if you can tell us a bit, a bit more about the licensing process, is there, if there are any ties connected to it, uh, something that you can do and cannot do when you have a, like a real licensed gun in your game? Well, usually it, it's like, I can't tell you all the details because I'm not uh, in the communications of all the details, but from what I know, uh, we've been we've been trying to do the ethical hunting approach. So usually this has no uh, troubles with the people. So we tell them, yeah, we hunt animals. We do not hunt. Uh, we do not shoot on people. We do not hunt anything, whatever. Uh, we try to do it the right way, the correct way. We try to do sound uh, and look as it is in real life. So this works, and they like it. Usually when they see trailers or they see some sort of assets, we send them. So they are more willing to talk. But then again, it, again, it, talk, it takes so much time because you had, all, you had to sign all the NDAs. And uh, when it comes to the right person who has the right to do it with you, it takes months maybe. Mm. But what, what's in, interesting, for example, is that some people in the industry have no idea what video games are. So they still think it's like this little pixel thingy. Mm. Uh, so why would we put a gun there? Mm. But then again, we had this nice um, feedback from Česka Zbrojovka. And they said that, yeah, we want to be, we want to be in the games because uh, we are pretty much, uh, pretty much commercials or adver advertisements for firearms are legally non-existent mm -hmm. in, in TV or billboards. Uh, just it's, it's banned everywhere. So they're on, not only way, um, but like they're one of the ways how they approach people outside of all the conventions and all the uh, shooting clubs is putting the firearms into the into the games. Right. And I'm pretty sure that it was uh, very much appreciated by uh, your players. So Daniel, thank you very much. And thank you. we're looking forward to the DLCs and to maybe possibly the next game that Nine Rock Games will come up with in the upcoming years. Thank you. Thank you again.